Study Article 50. This article will be studied during the week of February 10th through 16th. Jehovah provides for your liberty. Theme text. You must proclaim liberty in the land to all its inhabitants. Leviticus 25.10 Song 22 The Kingdom is in Place. Let it come. Preview Jehovah made a special arrangement for liberty or freedom to be declared in ancient Israel. It was the Jubilee. Christians are not under the Mosaic Law. Yet, the Jubilee has meaning for us. In this article, we will see how the ancient Jubilee reminds us of a provision Jehovah has made for us and how we can benefit from it. Paragraphs 1 and 2, Question A. What is a Jubilee? Question B. As recorded at Luke 4, 16-18, what did Jesus speak about? In some countries, special celebrations are arranged to mark the 50th year of the reign of a king or queen. That 50th year is often known as the Sovereign's Jubilee Year. The festivities that accompany the Jubilee might go on for a day, a week, or even longer, but they eventually come to an end, and the joy they brought is soon forgotten. We will examine a better Jubilee even better than the year-long festival that was proclaimed every fifty years in ancient Israel. That ancient jubilee brought liberty to the people who observed it. Why is that of interest to us today? Because Israel's jubilee year reminds us of a wonderful provision for lasting liberty that Jehovah is making even now, liberty that Jesus spoke about. Luke 4, 16-18 reads, He then went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and according to his custom on the Sabbath day, he entered the synagogue and stood up to read. So the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, and he opened the scroll and found the place where it was written, Jehovah's Spirit is upon me, because he anointed me to declare good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, and a recovery of sight to the blind, to send the crushed ones away free. The following is supplementary information. What was the Jubilee? A Jubilee is a special anniversary. The Israelites were to celebrate their Jubilee every fifty years. Starting with the time of entering the Promised Land, the nation of Israel was to count six years during which the land was sown, cultivated, and harvested. The seventh year was to be a Sabbath year, during which no sowing or pruning could be done. Seven of these seven-year periods, seven times seven equals forty-nine, were to be counted, and the following year, the fiftieth, was to be a jubilee year. Starting the count of years with the entry of the Israelites into the Promised Land, their first jubilee year began in Tishri, 1424 BCE. Returning to the article, Paragraph 3, Question As outlined at Leviticus 25, 8-12, how did the Israelites benefit from the jubilee? We can better understand what Jesus meant when he spoke of liberty by first considering the jubilee that God arranged for his ancient people. Jehovah told the Israelites, You must sanctify the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty in the land to all its inhabitants. It will become a jubilee for you, and each of you will return to his property, and each of you should return to his family. Leviticus 25, 8-12 reads, You will count off seven Sabbath years, seven times seven years, and the days of the seven Sabbath years will amount to forty-nine years. You will then sound the horn loudly in the seventh month on the tenth of the month. On the Day of Atonement you should cause the sound of the horn to be heard in all your land. You must sanctify the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty in the land to all its inhabitants. It will become a jubilee for you, and each of you will return to his property, and each of you should return to his family. 
A jubilee is what that fiftieth year will become for you. You will not sow seed or reap what grew on its own from leftover grain, nor gather the grapes of unpruned vines. For it is a jubilee. It is to be holy to you. You may eat only what the land produces by itself. In the preceding article, we considered how the Israelites benefited from the weekly Sabbath. How, though, did the Israelites benefit from the Jubilee? Well, suppose an Israelite had fallen into debt and, as a result, had been forced to sell his land to pay off the debt. During the Jubilee year, that land was to be returned to him. Therefore, the man could return to his property, and the future inheritance of his children would not be lost. In another case, a man who fell on hard times might have had to sell one of his children, or even himself, into slavery in order to pay a debt. During the Jubilee year, the slave was to return to his family. So no one would become a slave permanently with no hope. How thoughtful of Jehovah! The following is a description of the picture being considered with paragraph 3. During the Jubilee, men who had been slaves were freed and could return to their family and their land. The picture caption reads, The Jubilee in Israel produced rejoicing as those who had been slaves returned to their family and their land. Paragraphs 4 and 5 question, Why should the ancient Jubilee interest us today? What was another benefit of the Jubilee? Jehovah explained, No one among you should become poor, for Jehovah will surely bless you in the land that Jehovah your God is giving you to possess as an inheritance. Deuteronomy 15.4 What a contrast to what is happening in the world today, where the rich often get richer and the poor poorer. As Christians, we are not under the Mosaic Law. This means that we are not holding to the ancient Jubilee arrangement about freeing slaves, forgiving debts, and returning inherited land. Nonetheless, we have reason to be interested in the Jubilee. Why? Because we can enjoy liberty or freedom that reminds us of what Jehovah set in place for the Israelites. Jesus Proclaimed Liberty Paragraph 6 Question from what does mankind need to be liberated? All of us need to be liberated because we are slaves in one grim sense, slaves to sin. As a result of being sinners, we are subject to aging, sickness, and death. Many see evidence of that when they look into a mirror or go to a doctor for treatment. We are also discouraged when we commit sins. The Apostle Paul admitted that he was led captive to sin's law that was in his body. He added, Miserable man that I am! Who will rescue me from the body undergoing this death? Romans 7, 23 and 24 Paragraph 7, Question What did Isaiah foretell about liberty? Happily, God arranged a way for us to be rescued or freed from sin. Jesus is the key to that liberation. In the 8th century before our common era, the prophet Isaiah foretold a future grand liberation. That grand liberation would accomplish far more than did the liberation during Israel's jubilee year. He wrote, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord Jehovah is upon me because Jehovah anointed me to declare good news to the meek. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Isaiah 61, 1. To whom does that prophecy apply? Paragraph 8, question. To whom does Isaiah's prophecy about liberation apply? That important prophecy about liberation began to be fulfilled after Jesus started his ministry. When he went to the synagogue in his hometown of Nazareth, Jesus read those very words of Isaiah to the Jews assembled there. Jesus applied to himself the words, Jehovah's Spirit is upon me, because he anointed me to declare good news to the poor. 
He sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and a recovery of sight to the blind, to send the crushed ones away free, to preach Jehovah's acceptable year. Luke 4, 16-19 How did Jesus fulfill that prophecy? The first to be liberated. Paragraph 9, question. Many in Jesus' time hoped for what sort of liberation? The liberty or freedom that Isaiah foretold and that Jesus read about began to be granted in the first century. Jesus confirmed this when he announced, Today, this scripture that you just heard is fulfilled. Luke 4.21 Many who heard what Jesus read were probably looking for some political change, for liberation from Rome. They may have felt like the two men who said, We were hoping that this man was the one who was going to deliver Israel. Luke 24, 13 and 21 But you know that Jesus did not urge his followers to revolt against the heavy yoke of Rome. Instead, he instructed them to pay Caesar's things to Caesar. Matthew 22, 21 So how did Jesus bring freedom at that time? The picture caption reads, Jesus announces liberty in the synagogue of Nazareth. Paragraph 10, question. Jesus opened the way to liberty from what? God's Son came to help people gain liberty or freedom in two ways. First, Jesus opened the way to liberty from the oppressive doctrines taught by the religious leaders. Many Jews back then were enslaved to traditions and mistaken beliefs. Those who presumed to be spiritual guides were, in a sense, blind. In rejecting the Messiah and the spiritual enlightenment he offered, they remained in darkness and in sin. By his correct teachings and good example, Jesus made known to meek ones a spiritual liberation. Paragraph 11, Question What was the second way in which Jesus provided liberation? The second way in which Jesus provided liberation involved freeing mankind from enslavement to inherited sin. On the basis of Jesus' sacrifice, God could forgive the sins of those who show faith and who accept the ransom he provided. Jesus said, If the Son sets you free, you will be truly free. John 8, 36 That freedom was certainly greater than what could be gained during Israel's Jubilee year. For instance, a man set free during the Jubilee might again become a slave, and in any case, he would eventually die. Paragraph 12, Question Who were the first to benefit from the liberty announced by Jesus? On the day of Pentecost 33 CE, Jehovah anointed with Holy Spirit the apostles and other faithful men and women. He adopted them as his sons, so that in time they would be resurrected to heaven to reign with Jesus. These were the first to benefit from the liberty that Jesus announced in the synagogue of Nazareth. Those men and women were no longer enslaved to false teachings and unscriptural practices of the Jewish religious leaders. God also considered them liberated from the deadly effects of sin. The symbolic jubilee that began with the anointing of Christ's followers in 33 CE will end at the conclusion of Jesus' thousand-year reign. What will have been accomplished by that time? Millions more to be liberated. Paragraphs 13 and 14 question. Besides anointed Christians, Who can receive the liberty that Jesus announced? In modern times, millions of sincere people out of all nations are of the other sheep. They have not been called by God to reign in heaven with Jesus. Rather, they have the Bible-based prospect of living forever on earth. Is that your hope? Even now, you are receiving some benefits enjoyed by those who will be part of God's heavenly kingdom. By your faith in Jesus' shed blood, you can ask for forgiveness of your sins. That results in a right standing with God and a good conscience before Him. 
Think, too, of the blessings you enjoy because you have been liberated from long-held, unscriptural beliefs. Jesus said, You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. John 8, 32 What a joy to have such freedom! Paragraph 15, Question What freedom and blessings can we expect in the future? You can expect greater freedom to come. In the near future, Jesus will act decisively to eliminate false religion and corrupt human rulership. God will protect a great crowd who serve Him, and then He will allow them to enjoy blessings in an earthly paradise. Revelation 7, 9, and 14 A vast number will be resurrected and will have the opportunity to be liberated from all the effects of Adam's sin. Paragraph 16, Question, What Grand Liberation Awaits Mankind? During the thousand-year reign, Jesus and his co-rulers will help to raise mankind to perfect physical and spiritual health. This time of restoration and liberation will be like the Jubilee in Israel. The result for all on earth who serve Jehovah loyally will be human perfection, free from sin. Paragraph 17, Question, Isaiah 65, 21-23 foretells what for God's people? A prophetic description of life on earth is found at Isaiah 65, 21-23, which reads, They will build houses and live in them, and they will plant vineyards and eat their fruitage. They will not build for someone else to inhabit, nor will they plant for others to eat. For the days of my people will be like the days of a tree, and the work of their hands my chosen ones will enjoy to the full. They will not toil for nothing, nor will they bear children for distress, because they are the offspring made up of those blessed by Jehovah and their descendants with them. That life will not be a life of idleness. Rather, the Bible indicates that God's people at that time will be doing useful, satisfying work. At the end of that period, we can be sure that the creation itself will also be set free from enslavement to corruption and have the glorious freedom of the children of God. Romans 8, 21 The cover picture caption reads, In the new world, we will enjoy doing useful and satisfying work. Paragraph 18. Question. Why can we trust that a bright future awaits us? Just as Jehovah arranged for the Israelites to balance work and rest, so it will be for his people in the coming thousand-year rule of Christ. There will certainly be time for spiritual activities. Worship of God is essential to happiness today, and it will be so in the new world. Yes, we have good reason to rejoice over the good work and spiritual activity that we can expect when believing mankind enjoys life during Christ's millennial reign. The following is supplementary information. Aspects of the Symbolic Jubilee 30 CE Jesus announces liberty in the synagogue of Nazareth. 33 CE The symbolic jubilee begins with the anointing of Christ's followers. Today, the anointed are enjoying many benefits of the symbolic jubilee. Millennium During the thousand-year reign of Christ, humans will experience restoration and liberation. End of Christ's millennial reign the symbolic jubilee ends, having completely liberated mankind from sin and death. Returning to the article, how would you answer? What was the jubilee in Israel, and how did the nation benefit from it? How has Jehovah extended liberty to the anointed? How will Jehovah extend complete liberty to the other sheep? Psalm 142 holding fast to our hope. End of article.